the vice president presidential candidate running mate uh nicole shanahan that they are she was on a podcast and then uh you know it's been very public uh even on fox and friends this morning talking about the idea of dropping their campaign and endorsing a president trump's and would that be a move where both of them get kind of positions within an administration rfk obviously likely would get one that would be either near or at cabinet level and would you be comfortable with that as a you know maybe a typical you know republican conservative even christian voter there's two options that we're looking at and one is staying in forming that new party but we run the risk of a kamala harris uh, kamala harris and and waltz uh, presidency because we draw votes from trump or we draw somehow more votes from trump or we walk away right now and join forces with with Donald Trump and and you know we walk away from that and we explain to our base why we're making this decision they see right now that their numbers that they look at internally uh, hurt Trump more than they do Harris uh, and that they feel like but either way if they could bring if they could explain to their voters will and get their voters who are again are like are the kind of voters that Donald Trump was so successful with in 2016. Uh, it's why I won in 2016. Is it is people who typically don't vote. It's not people who uh, are independents who decide who to vote for and vote differently each election. It's literally people who usually don't vote at all. Well, and I think it's really interesting, and it gives us a, a really a clear picture of the state of the Democrat Party today, is that you had earlier this year Tulsi Gabbard leaving the Democrat Party, writing a book about why, for the love of country, you leave the Democrat Party. Exactly. So someone who comes from a long history of, of elected Democrats and, and uh, Democrats in the state of Hawaii, you have RFK Jr., who is... Uh, royalty within the Democrat Party, being a Kennedy, a part of Camelot, so to yeah. speak. And normally, when you see one of these third-party tries by a former Democrat, what do you normally see happen? They do it, they they realize it's not going to go anywhere, and then they end up endorsing the Democrat. Right. It's a very unique, almost unprecedented thing to see someone leave a, a high level of name recognition within a party, run for a third-party slot, as an independent, and then say, look, we don't want the Democrat to win. That's what Shanahan was saying. She was very clear. Their two options are, do we stay in and risk, she used the term risk, a Harris presidency, or do we drop out and uh, endorse Donald Trump? Right. I think that is a very unique moment in our history, and in, it should speak volumes about the state of the Democrat Party today when you're having things like this happen. Talking about RFK lit up the phone lines, and that's exactly exactly what the campaign for RFK would like to know and the Trump campaign. Remember, we now have heard that the, RF, the RFK's campaign is thinking about endorsing President Trump's um, and that I mean, we heard about it from his vice presidential. Yes, pick. and usually, and, she, and the major funder of the of the effort to right. do the ballot initiative. They're on twenty three state ballots right now. They're awaiting official confirmation for another twenty three to get um, official like status as a party. You got to get to five. That you have to get. You know, you've got to get out enough ballots so you can get to five percent of the popular vote. So you don't have to keep going through this every single election cycle. So they be they'd be right on the line. But it'd be difficult. I mean, it's right on the line, but difficult, especially because right now, as things get closer this election, people probably get even more and more like, you know what, I'd love to vote for, but you know, this is it's if I vote for him, uh, I may be putting this person in office. So interesting to note too, they feel like they are taking away more from Trump than they are from Harris or from Biden previously, and so that they feel like that's where they've got the more negotiating power to go to. And President Trump says he likes RFK. We played it for you. And that there would be a space for him in his administration, likely at a very high level, either cabinet or, or right below that, like a, as an administrator. Yeah, we posed that question to our phone calls, said, hey, if you want to tell us what you think in our comments, and they lit up. So let's go ahead and take some of those. Let's go to John, who's calling on line one in Hawaii. John, you're on the air. Yes, I think he should be a Secretary of Health and Human Services. RFK Jr. has some very good ideas, as does Nicole Shanahan, about 
expanding health care coverage for children and et cetera, I think it'd be a great fit as uh, long as we just leave the abortion decisions to the states, as Trump has said, and uh, don't try to do anything on a federal level. Just leave that alone. Yeah, what, what, right. I mean, President Trump is very clear about that, that uh, while there's been some moves in Congress that have not been uh, successful, that, that these the whole point of overturning Roe versus Wade was to return these uh, battles to the states. Now, the, the, the Democrats don't want to do that. Uh, but even in the states, because they moved quickly and a lot of mis- and disinformation uh, that we tried to combat, but they've got, again, hundreds of millions of dollars to combat it, uh, to fight with, uh, they rushed to the ballots. And they kind of convinced the pro-life community to think, hey, you should rush to the ballots too. Uh, we said, no, don't try to rush to the ballots. You, we need to now. We want Roe versus Wade. Let's spend time really educating voters, educating legislators before we start rushing in to try to make them do ballot initiatives and, and things like that, which can be very confusing and use complicated language that basically you can feel like you're voting for something pro-life and it's the most pro-abortion language uh, that they could potentially write because it's written in legalese. So uh, I think that there there are ways to kind of minimize what Republicans would be worried about RFK's position, Junior's on. Uh and I think he just came up with that, so, which is like, I think there's a lot put of them in roles where you've already said yeah. like the, the feds were taking you out of this role anyway. Well, I think there's there's honestly a kind of a compassionate nature to his campaign that a lot of Trump kind of conservatives are oddly in support of. They're not people who only say don't ever spend money or don't spend taxpayer dollars on certain things. No, I think they gonna, actually gonna have some heart, dollars. spend it well. And I think that's where the RFK base Americans. comes in. Right. So let's go ahead and continue on with those calls. Uh, let's go to Gary, who's calling on line three. Gary, listen on Sirius XM. You're on the air. Hi, I'm Gary from New Bedford, Massachusetts. I'm a disabled VA veteran. I'm on a, my way to the VA right now, as a matter of fact. And I think uh, RFK should be given the opportunity to fill the position that his dad was in, in the Department of Justice. I don't know if he's ever been a lawyer or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. He is um, He is an environmental attorney. So the question would be, would he want to take on running an entire department that is has a division on that, but there, you know, the main division would be again is on you know federal crime and and you know, much larger than you. I think he'd want a bigger position than just being the head of the environmental section of of, yeah. F, of DOJ. Um, and, and again, he might have a broader legal career than I know of. That might just be where he ended up focusing it uh, publicly, publicly yeah. because he he has a whole organization that he funds that does this work well. But That's right, yeah. uh, he might have a, a broad enough legal career. I mean, he's, he's a smart person. And honestly, a lot of the people that get put inside those positions are so politically motivated uh, by their by their, uh, by their beliefs that the law is just kind of utilized for political reasons anyway. So I'm not to say he couldn't run it, but it that is one of the most difficult agencies to run because it is full of bureaucrats who will undermine you uh, at the at almost the toughest way. I mean, I've talked to a lot of people say, "How would you take on the DOJ?" And it's been tough for Republicans because that it's a it's an agency run by a lot of bureaucrats who went to law school and will throw a lot of hurdles in your way if you're trying to make any reforms. Well, and the you mentioned he was an environmental lawyer. He uh, was one of the principal people at Riverkeeper, which started to help clean up the Hudson River and is now like a national organization. So that's really where his area of law has been, has been going after polluters in, in waterways. But I, I think the, the point that Gary brings up is interesting that yeah. you know that he is against deep state corruption. That is one of clearly something he is concerned about within the federal government. So whether it be the DOJ, I see a lot of people saying maybe he should be the CIA director. That would be a, a meltdown it's, from the it's deep the RFK, state. The the Department of Justice. Yeah, I always think about when, when I went, interned at the Department right. of Justice, the building is named after his right. late father. father. So it would be interesting if it were some sort of role that dealt with rooting out corruption in, in the deep state uh, within the own uh, the, the federal government. Yeah. I just I think if you asked him, I'm not sure that's the first one he picked because, uh, you know, when you, when you think about AGs doing press conferences, right? It's usually major criminal, you know, things like we've caught these cartels, we've yeah. caught these drugs. Is that really does that 
Is that what you think of as him? Yeah. We have one more call related to RFK, and then we're going to change some topics. We'll still stick on that as well. Dan's calling on line two in Washington. Dan, you're on the air. Yeah, thank you. I'm Dan Matthews from Seattle and the state of Washington. Uh, first, I want to thank you guys. My wife and I give to you guys monthly what we can, and, and that's a way to just increase our giving. It's automatic. I think everybody should really consider that. That's Sorry awesome. about the shapeless plug, but you need it. And, yeah, I appreciate uh, it. I think that RFK has a lot of talents, uh, like you mentioned, uh, in either environmental protection agency or whatever, but I think consider Surgeon General. Uh, ben Carson is pretty good at health and human services, but Surgeon General, he's got uh, JFK or RFK has a lot of comments he's made about, uh, you know, vaccines and mandates and all that. And uh, he would be a great guy to uh, head that up. Yeah. Okay. So, Surgeon General, do you have to be a doctor, Will? So, typically, it is a senior military medical officer or senior uniform physician commissioned by the government to fill that role. That is why the other caller did mention HHS. Or That's even, different. I've seen some people even HHS say FDA. Do not need to be, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah F- an FDA, administrator there. FDA would be, is a, can be, well, this is interesting. So right now, FDA would be a step down from a cabinet member. But Donald Trump, in part of his negotiations, can make any position inside the government, inside the executive branch cabinet. So he could say, but for you, I'll make FDA cabinet. What does that change? What is, what's the, you're in the cabinet meetings. You're, oh, you're, you're one of the members of the That's cabinet. That's what I was asking. What's that, what so has that, that raises you to the level of the me- weekly meeting with the president of the United States. I mean, it's a big jump up. 